Hello and welcome to Arirang News Break on this Friday, June 10th. Live from Seoul, I'm Han Daen. Our top story this morning, there was a breakthrough at Korea's National Assembly on Thursday as the rival parties finally elected a new assembly speaker and two deputies. And as our Shin Se-min reports, some major parliamentary changes could be on the way as it marks the first time an opposition party member was named the assembly speaker in more than a decade. Chung se gyun is the first lawmaker from an opposition party to take the National Assembly Speaker position in 14 years. The last time was Park Kwan yong of the then-opposition Grand National Party in 2002. With the shift in party control of the Speaker's seat, the Assembly is likely to face some changes. The Speaker's authority to convene, adjourn and cease the plenary sessions or committee meetings will now be in the hands of the main opposition party speaker. The power to appoint the Secretary General of the Assembly Secretariat, a minister level position, as well as the Deputy Secretary General for Legislative Affairs and the Deputy Secretary General for Administrative Affairs, will also be decided by Chung. As a result, political watchers are anticipating that opposition party lawmakers may have a better shot at getting them. Although the speaker is expected to be an influential balancer of the political parties in handling legislative procedures, the general consensus is that the decision-making processes will be different from the last parliament, as two of the three assembly speaker and deputy positions are being held by opposition parties. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Faced with unprecedented level of sanctions, North Korea is becoming more vivid in proposing talks to South Korea. Just 20 days after Seoul rejected Pyongyang's offer for military talks, the North has suggested the two Koreas hold civilian-level dialogue to discuss ways to reunify the peninsula. Connie Kim reports. Having failed at its previous attempts, North Korea is again proposing dialogue with the South, and this time it isn't limiting it to just military or government talks. The North state-run Korean Central News Agency said Friday that Pyongyang wants to hold a gathering of South and North Koreans who hope for the reunification of the peninsula on the 71st anniversary of Korea's liberation from Japanese colonial rule. The report didn't specify a time or place for the gathering. North Korea says it would be an opportunity to discuss ways to reunify the peninsula and ease tensions. In return, the North called for a halt of all military exercises for war, unity and push for reunification under a confederation with autonomous governments. North Korea's latest offer comes just a few weeks after Kim Jong-un proposed inter-Korean military talks during the Workers' Party's landmark Congress in May. The South Korean government has stressed there will be no dialogue until the North shows a willingness to give up its nuclear weapons program. Connie Kim, Arirang News. Hillary Clinton, now the presumptive Democratic Party nominee, has won President Barack Obama's endorsement as his favored successor. In a video message released by the Clinton campaign, Obama said no one has been as qualified as Clinton for the job as the U.S. president. Park jong hong has more. In a three-minute-long video message, President Obama said he was eager to get out and campaign for Hillary Clinton. I know how hard this job can be. That's why I know Hillary will be so good at it. In fact, I don't think there's ever been someone so qualified to hold this office. She's got the courage, the compassion, and the heart to get the job done. Earlier this week, Clinton surpassed the magic number of delegates required to win the Democratic ticket and became the first female presidential nominee of a major U.S. party. The endorsement increases pressure on Clinton's rival, Bernie Sanders, to concede the race. Sanders has not yet offered his all-out backing for Clinton. But after talks with Obama at the White House, Sanders said he would meet Clinton in the near future and work with her to ensure Republican nominee Donald Trump was not elected president in November. The Vermont senator said he would stay in the race until the final Democratic primary vote in Washington, D.C. on June 14th. Wrapping up his video message, Obama called for the Democratic Party to unite behind Clinton saying it would ensure not only election victory, but a brighter future for the United States. Park Chung-hong, Arirang News. 
Pedro Pablo Kuczynski looks set to claim victory in one of the tightest presidential races in Peru's history. Electoral officials say Kuczynski received 50.12% of votes. His rival, Keiko Fujimori, daughter of imprisoned former president Alberto Fujimori, got 49.88%. Fujimori is in no rush to concede defeat, though. She's pinning her hopes on some scores of handwritten tallies sent for review, but watchers say it's impossible for her to overtake Kuczynski. An economist who worked at the World Bank, Kuczynski also served as Peru's finance minister and prime minister under President Alejandro Toledo. He has pledged to foster economic growth using his experience in the financial sector. The volume of crabs being caught by Korean fishermen in the West Sea has plunged over the past year because of Chinese fishing boats illegally working in their waters. South Korea's Maritime Ministry says the cumulative crab catch from January to April came to slightly over 660 tons, less than a third of the amount caught during the same period last year. Korean fishermen are pointing the blame squarely at Chinese fishing boats. They're demanding more effective measures against illegal operations. The South Korean government has vowed to take action, but it could prove to be complicated as most of the illegal fishing takes place near the de facto maritime border between North and South Korea. And that's all from me. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to Arirang for more in-depth coverage on the day's stories throughout the day.